Uh, welcome to triage number 10 on November 7th. We're all here. We started a new thing in between the status meeting and triage meeting. Those of you that are on the call, we asked to start throwing out numbers of how many bugs we're going to get done today. Um, what do we get? We got 42, 35, 45, 23 out there. Um, I said 50, but I also pointed out that I get to control the meeting, which is a slightly unfair. And Bob, what did you say it was again? What number did you I pick? changed it to 60 because I'll just... Uh, you'll just sit here on the call until we get there. Right. Nice. All right, here we go. Here are our bugs, 466. So if Bob's right, we're going to 406. Um, let's go with, uh, oh, and Tobias on the call asked for 4140 first. Um, so the burn window appears, attach a project. Yes, this is a problem. It's currently in 3X because we wouldn't hold the 38 build for it. Um, oh, we have more information. Uh, whole thing running. The last is instantiated from run once, which is instantiated from MSI exec. Whoa. What is this run once exit thing? Yeah, someone posted a link on uh, users talking about this, and there, it's, there was a typo. KB article 281820 talks about how driver installation can trigger run once entries in the registry. Oh, fascinating. Well, that's yeah. going to mess everything up. Exactly. What the? That's a silly thing to do in a driver install. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's, there's kind of a mismatch of, of concepts. I think the idea was the driver could do something once, but it kind of breaks the, the use of the actual registry key. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Yep. Because burn writes the run once key to make sure that on a crash scenario, it can get itself started and start fixing up whatever state it was stuck in, which is very similar to what the Windows installer does except the Windows installer is a service, so they can get started by different ways. And we need to be in the run once key so that we start elevated. Otherwise, the second time you come along, if you're on the run per user key, um, then you don't get elevated. So something about saying to run once burn instance to test if the original version is still running. Oh my. Oh man. Something to try to find that burn itself is still running. That's going to be fascinating. Yeah, so this is a bug. Uh, we currently have it in 3X. It would be great if someone wanted to fix it. Um, I know it's floating out there. Um, and yeah, so I don't think I don't know if this bug would make 3.8 at this point, especially given some of the things that people are talking about doing to make it work. Um, yeah, started. I think we need to have a much better understanding of how we could actually fix it. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I this is good information. I'm glad it's here. I think the part of that you added about the KB article would be great if it was captured in this bug, just so we have it. Um, and I think it would, I, uh, yeah, uh, we'll have to have a discussion on Wix steps because I'm, it's not exactly sure the best way to tackle this problem. This is only drivers that do this, huh? Interesting. Interesting. Well, yeah. At least for this particular instance. Um, uh, not clear the best way to solve this. It wasn't clear that run once EX is also uh, useful in this case. Well, all right. So I, I don't think we're going to design it on the triage call, um, although those of you that guessed lower numbers are going to be in a better spot now. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so this is open bug, right? Yes. All right, cool. So it's open, so we should, uh, I mean, yeah, if people have ideas, we should go on Wix devs and start coming up with, different ideas on how to address this and then try to come up with a good attack plan because right now I only see bad I bad options 
I can't. I haven't come up with a. Off the top of my head, I don't come up with a good idea. Well, the problem is it's on XP, which eliminates a lot of other options, like you know, scheduling a task or or anything that uh, would be an option on Vista and later. Yeah, no, yeah, not that I'm excited about XP scheduling. XP kind of limits our options here. Um. Yeah, <laughs> only happens on XP. Apparently, it's an old XP behavior. Yeah, so XP is going away, but I just saw numbers last week that keep XP in the 30% of the world and Windows 7 at 40-some percent of the world and 8.1 taking less than single-digit percentages away from those currently. It's taking more away from Vista and 8 which unfortunately means that XP is not disappearing quickly, which makes it very challenging for us to figure out what we're going to do with it. Because soon it's going to end up unpatched and very dangerous to the outside world. <sighs> um, so yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this, this, is a, this is a hard bug to solve. Yeah. You know, the other interesting thing is XP doesn't have elevation. So maybe we do something funky where we only write the run once keys on the operating systems that have elevation and we do the run key on XP and deal with the differences. That's interesting. That might work out. Yeah, so Tyus, that's great. If you want to volunteer to work on it, I think we need to go out there and come up with ideas on how to solve it. It's, not, it's less about burn at this point in time and it's more about coming up with a solution that is not bad um, and yeah we'll, we'll yeah dig into it all right um, there we go eight minutes on that bug <laughs> we need to go talk about this more with steps it's not clear to me the best solution right now yeah for sure yuck um, but it's good that we're starting to narrow down what the root issue is so that's progress um, it would be good to get that KB article number in here if you could, Bob. If you have, I did. All right, excellent. Um, all right, moving on to untriage bugs. Did anything come in while we we're waiting? No. Cool. So we're still at 466. All right. <laughs> Need to hit 42. Let's rock and roll. Uh, when I try to install the 2013 MSI, it falls over. Oh, is this not V6? Hey, isn't this? Okay, so this is on. The latest Ferion. Fer, fer, is that a word or is that version? I don't know. Um, on with 3.8 branch. Um, Bob, this is yours, right? It is. And I'm, oh, <laughs> um, yeah, let's just take that bug. Okay. Nice. Did I miss that in the code review? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's your fault. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that's wow. That's pretty awesome. There. Oh, I do know what's happening there. Yeah. Never mind. Let's just. Move all right. On. We got it. <laughs> on our, moving let's, along. <laughs> let's not discuss it. Uh, a four X today package definition is part of the payload definition. Reduced deprecation of the package itself could be a child payload. Uh, I ran into this doing .NET four five one. Uh, we have two packages: the um, the web download the web bootstrapper and the uh, full redist hmm. that are identical except for the the actual package. And it just hit me. It's like, you know, you have to duplicate the install command, detect condition, all those things that uh, can get kind of hairy. Um, so this was just a random idea of, boy, wouldn't it be cool if we had some kind of a, you know, payload package payload ref or something that we could we could oh, use to create I see so you want to create packages. a payload group uh, oh. something I, I don't quite have the uh, the design okay uh, it, yeah there, there, there are probably there are usability things around the XE pack the packages stuff they're also kind of funky in the way the compiler handles them too so right uh, yeah I suppose and it's 4x yeah I suppose we could look at it someone okay. could look at that 
Images are missing from the V3 manual. Oh, no. All right. Um, yeah, we should take this and go try to find those images. That works. Um, I think I can still get in the source words, so they're probably still up there somewhere. They're probably just not copied over. I must oh, the files are missing. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Try uninstalling Wix generated using MS using uninstall option. Uh, this this isn't a bug. Um, I added a comment already. Um, if you if you run an MSI from the command line, uh, it doesn't without uh, running MSI exec. Yes. You just get the you know yeah. whatever the, yeah. the registration yeah. is. That's cool. Yeah. No, not a bug. Yay. Um, oh, hey, look, it already said not a bug. That's so awesome. <laughs> that makes me laugh. Well, I, I resolved it, but left it left it assigned to triage. All right, so you took this bug, went back and forth. I remember this from last week. Can't attach full log due to it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so this is, so uh, as really far as nice? I can tell, we don't actually support repair. Uh, but it should un do an uninstall before doing an install, right? No? Mm, no. It looks like the case that's covered is doing a major, a late major upgrade. Oh. So if the new package, or the condition, oh, the condition is, um, look, it's in my history. Um, the condition is. Well, all right, all right. I, I trust you if it, it's wrong. So the question is I, 13, I, 3, 8. Well, I don't think it's wrong. I think this is a, this is a we need to support repair. It's a it's a feature that right now V6 package doesn't do. Well, it's a bug because if you do repair, it fails your install, right? You can say that. Yeah. So um, three eight or no? Uh, it's ex it's already existed. Uh, this is not a change in behavior. Um, I'm fine with 3x. Yeah, I, I. At this point, I don't want to take it. Yeah. At so. this point, I think it's it's too late to make the change. It, it, so. it it's not awful, but it's not. Um. It's cool. it's functionality. I don't I, I don't have enough. This is one of those that's really hard to test because yeah, I don't actually have a v6 you know v6 package. All right. And so. it covers a lot of versions. So. Anybody else out there? want to fight for this to be in 3.8, which means stepping up and doing mostly the work somewhat. Got to, at clarify, least. What, got to clarify what fighting means in this case. Well, yes. I mean, you know, or if they're like, no, no, really, but it is in 3.7. So it's like, yeah, it's been that way for a while. All right. There we go. Got something. Product search feature. Ah, all right. Jack Hennessy has been working on this. He sent this to things. Yes. All right. Cool. Um, right, this this bug is nowhere. Oh, he took it out of 3x. Um, um, oh, snap, we don't have 3.9 yet. No, um, not quite. I would vote for this in 3.9. Probably not 3.8. Yeah, I, I added some comments to the pull request. It's, yes. it's really that. close. Um, I, I saw that he sent another one. Yeah, he, he submitted a new oh. one today. Okay. Um, yeah, it's 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 really close. I mean, the functionality is there. Um, so the question is, do you want it in 3.8? Yeah, Jack, just for future, we want to you can leave it in 3x. Just marking as untriage is enough for us to obviously trip across it again. So no need to change the release to blank. Um, 3x actually helps us know where it was. But anyway, the area is burned. That's good. So the question is the release 3.9. Yeah, I definitely want to take it soon. I just, I, yeah, I'm uh, going to say I don't want it in 3.8. All right. So it's a big enough change at this point to. Uh, cool. Well, I figured it was probably going to be between Jacob and Jack, whoever got the first 3.9 bug, and so it looks like yeah. we'll, we'll do this one. Cool? Yeah, that's cool with me. All right, so I'll let you create the 3.9 spec.
space, and I'll go create that branch soon. Uh, another thing to do. Yes, right. Okay. Yes. And we're back into ancient history. So hopefully things start going faster. But we'll see. Uh, light cannot find file with type blank. Oh, yes. These are not good bugs. Um, when you hit them, they're very frustrating. File ID, yes. Yes. The issue is that a file name over 255, the compiler stating the file doesn't exist. I really? The, uh, well, chances of this fix are low. We probably should fix it, and it could be fixed in 3x. Oh, it's light. There's no way this is in the compiler. <sighs> okay, someone using sloppy terminology. It's in the tool set. Um, and the problem is when a path is really long, you can get this message. I doubt we fix this since 3.5, maybe 3.6, maybe. 3x? Um, yeah, I'm like, wait, hold on. Are we still talking about, is, is this like we're we're at some kind of edge condition where if, if you're between 255 and 260? Well, no, it's, no it's, the problem is that the file is too long, and sometimes you'll see error messages come out of um, light. There is one that will basically, it says this, cannot find file with type blank. Yeah. That's your error message. Go figure out what's wrong. And in this case, one of the files is too long, so you have to go figure out which one it is, and you get no information. At least it should say, this file path to this file is too long from line Wait, it's, number It's whatever. literally not saying which file it can't find? That's correct. That is the message you get. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is a bad bug. That's horrible. Yeah, we should definitely at least say what we tried to find. Right. And a source line number, because we should have one. Yeah. Anyway, I think this is one of those cases where exceptions get thrown, and we catch mm -hmm. them, but we don't have a good error message on the other side of it, and things like right, that. Right. All stuff that I'm fixing in four right now. Good. All right. There's no way we're hitting 50. Um, currently, 3536 add the suffix that to its friendly name. Yes. That's true. One certificate. Customers ask questions. Yeah, I, this is a reasonable request. What we do in certificates is a little, it's a little unfortunate, but it's also hard to find the stupid things again. So, um, I think this is a reasonable feature request. If someone want to do it. It's not a bug. It's a feature. And I think it could be done three X because it'd be additive. Okay. I also don't like that friendly name usage. Download only layout updates. Yes, this would be cool if this was done. Um, where do I want to put it? 3x? I think it'd be safe in 3x. Yeah, it could go in 3x. Basically, it'd be cool new functionality. Is Yeah, how, how do we determine that it's correct? Well, we have the hashes, so we should be able to verify that the file local is the one we want. Okay. Currently, we don't do anything like that during layout, though. We during layout, we don't even look. We just we don't even look for the files that exist. Okay. It just downloads them all again, which is too bad because it would be cool if it did. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with this in three X. Need to localize splash screen image. I st uh, still drives me crazy, but sure, whatever. Um, this is mostly changing the compiler because we would then be able to, because it's in a resource, we would be able to put in a localized resource location. So this is totally possible. It's additive. I remember this bug. I remember when yeah. I remember when Genio opened it and, and it basically came down to, why are you putting text in your splash screen? In the end, right. I think they didn't, which ended up working out extremely well. But if you did, so 3x? Sure. Or do we put this as the the, the niche bug, which is, I think, a, a term that's winning? I'm perfectly okay with that. I think the need is so obscure that... It's not good to localize your splash screens in general. Any right. other thoughts out there? Anybody? It's a splash screen. You show an icon, you know? It's. Yeah, there you go. 
I have a very hard time seeing Jacob Hoover and John Cooper, like their words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I, let's 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 put this on meh, and uh, which I think was be niche at this point, and we'll move on. Cool. Hey. All right. He fails to parse customized projects. I believe that would not surprise me. Yep, that would not surprise me at all. 3x? Um, Solutions are in MS Bill, rarely work out. I'm sure Heat doesn't handle that well. Just boom. Yeah, does he even support harvesting from a solution? Well, no, they're using a project file, but the project file uses solution dirt in it. And if you launch it from Votive, it should work. If you launch it from Votive, but this is talking about Heat. Right, but Heat is within the MS build that's launched within the Visual Studio. So technically speaking, it would have the oh, context. Uh. So anyway, it, it could be done. Oh, you're saying there's a workaround setting the solution there? No, I think this always fails and it never gets solution there. So, anyway, we could put it in 3x. It's not breaking if someone wants to go to it. There's a bunch of these kind of things in heat and customized in projects. I mean, heat parsing projects just didn't work out in the end, which was sad because it would be cool if it did. Yeah, I'm. So one, this is a feature, not a bug. True. Um, mm, or two, well, yeah, it depends on how you look at it. Sure. Yeah. Well, I. Okay, it doesn't I, work. I yes, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work, but it, it's again, this is heat needing to understand how to deal with solutions. Well, isn't yes. It? Yeah. Basically. Um. And second. I just cannot imagine hard coding any kind of solution dependency into your projects. Well, there is that. Is that crazy, or is or is it just me? Uh, it's it's uh, people do it because if you ms build the .sln file, you get these variables. And people do that. Okay. And people do that. Yes. It's quite common because okay. there's no built-in support for traversal projects, so people use SLN files instead, essentially. Got it. So, not that crazy. Certainly not the way that we do things in Wix, but not that crazy. So, 3x, someone could do it. It wouldn't break sure. anything. It would just sure. start working. User data profile not deleted on uninstall. Uh, uh, Is that an option? I don't know. Interesting. Um, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Uh, we could take it in 3x. I don't think it would be breaking. It would be an additive thing. I don't actually know how you do this. Never looked. Uh, yeah. All right. But it seems reasonable. It's like, you know, delete and yeah. really delete. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Reference project output groups ignored. Oh, OK. This is going to be heat. Right. I'm. Yes, I, I agree. We should do this. Is heat though, and we could do this in three X. Um, okay. It, there's a again. This, this is why this, that's what this comment down here says. Project harvesting has many issues, and we can try to fix it in the next release. Well, we'll put it in three X until someone wants to fix it in the next release. It's not breaking. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Sorry, this is just taking me flashbacks back to the day when we had this, and we just were getting inundated with all kinds of problems when we right. really wanted this feature to work. And eventually, I just said, "We have to pull it. We just can't deal with this." And because it's 
this stuff just all over the place. So we're in that time period, I think, and I'm having flashbacks of bad days. Sad days. It wasn't easy. It was really painful. It's one of those features where you're like, everybody wants it, and then it doesn't work, but you gave it to them, and now they hate you because you're taking it away because it doesn't work. Right. And, and it was not fun. <laughs> don't I do that. It. Yeah, don't do that. that. That's just, yeah. Com plus upgrade. Oh, so this is com plus not we're supporting a late scheduled major upgrade. Oh, sure. Makes sense. That could be fixed in 3x, I think. I believe that. Uh, I have no idea how hard that would be. That might be as easy as just getting the to-do logic, you know, the the right. Wix, the component things, right? Integrate Wix uh, with major upgrade. Condition this text for new version detected. Oh. Yes. Oh. I remember this. Yeah. So right now, if you pull in Wix, exit early with success, yep. it's using a different property than... Th than it should be. Well, technically Wix exit early with success came first, but yes, I'll agree. It should be using the one that I created later. Um I think that's uh, interesting. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. Three X? Sure. Load user profile. Whoa. Oh, sure. Another property we should set. We should do that. Okay. This could be done in 3x. All right. There's only a gazillion settings on these things, and we've only right. done you know, a bazillion of them. Um, I'm assuming gazillion is bigger than bazillion, but I'm not actually sure. Um, <laughs> unable to add or remove project configurations. I believe this... Is, don't we have another bug on this? We have so many bugs on this problem. Um the whole configuration is not working correctly in MPF and all that stuff. MPF, right? I said it right this time, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> um, yes, I do believe this is a problem. This has been a problem for a long time. I'll, I'll look for duplicates. Yeah. Product code page being overridden when you use the UI extension. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we should put this in 4x because this is yeah, all kinds of crazy breaking. I think we're going UTF-8 in 4x, so that'll probably solve that problem anyway. Given the web config, that gives you error, all right. Resolves the element, strictly speaking, empty namespace. Default namespace. This is the correct design. And then All right. So I don't. This doesn't seem to be a bug. They need to do the namespace stuff for their XPath, which is a pain. But that's what you have to do. Oh, add namespace support to XML. Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I could see that. Well, so I'm confused because the last comment is saying that XML config works, XML oh. file doesn't. Oh, all right, so this is only about XML file then. Which I guess doesn't surprise me because XML config came later and is smarter. Well, I think for the most part, XML files stopped getting work done on it because XML config is a superset, albeit slightly more complicated to use. That's true. So, uh, are we taking this? Well, I wouldn't want to take this one 
per se. I, I mean, I guess I could, I could consider this a feature request to bring XML file up to XML configs level of functionality. Mm. If, or not, not that exactly. I was going to say, isn't that XML config? Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, anything other than the, the, you know, the seeking behavior that XML config has. We honestly should just have one. I mean, truthfully, I, yeah, I mean, I'm fine if this is, you know, say XML file is deprecated. All right, l let's put it in Nish and kick it out in 3x, and if someone really wants to go fix XML file, they can. That works for me. Yeah, all right. Look, this is bug 3000. <laughs> How weird. That That's, yeah, whatever. DTF projects are not upgraded to Wix 3.5. Oh, I suppose not the CS project. We're not creating a VS project flavor. Oh, yeah. We're never doing this. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't see. We're never doing this. This is incredible amounts of work that we're just not going to, I mean, we, we could, we'll put this in niche because we could, but oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> A project well, flavor just for the custom action things. Exactly. It would just be for the custom action project. That's right. I don't, I don't, yeah. Uh, it would be awesome, but holy cow. Yeah, I mean, considering how far we are away from supporting the Wix language inside Votive, doing a project flavor for, for custom action projects, yeah, that's, that's niche. So, I not a bad idea, but mm, yeah. <sighs> Major upgrade default localized downgrade error message. Used a default localized downgrade error message. How do we default it? Something like that. Yeah, well, we could provide a loc message. Oh, we could provide a loc message so that if you used it, you would have it. Yeah, but right now there's no place for the loc strings to plug in. This isn't an extension. Major upgrade is in you know, core language. No, but you could, we, we could, uh, imagine we documented in a Wix, a Wixel file that you could use this, this string that we do have localized. Right, so you could, you could do, and then the doc shows major upgrade, yada, yada, with hash, loc, downgrade error message, or sorry, bang. bang. Bang look downgrade error message and you'd be like, Oh, where'd that come from? Oh, that comes from the Wix documented over here kind of thing. And then we could localize it and everybody could get a free downgrade error message. Right. Sorry, the I read this as saying the downgrade error message attribute or whatever it's actually called should not be required. Yeah, no, that we can't do. I, I, right. I we you could read it like that, but we can't do that because you may not want that message. Right. So, you know, you, we could just document that we provide this string that could be localized. That works for me. Um, it, it's interesting. It could be done in 3x and all that. It, it could be done. It's basically it basically turns into it's like he said. You know, we could start creating a list of localized strings that are common for installers, and you could just go, here's our localized library of useful strings. Right. <laughs> Pre-canned strings. Essentially, that's what that does. What if we kill this and make? Well, no, no. This is this is this is a good one to start with. We'll keep. We yeah. should keep this issue, and then we could keep this idea around if other ones come up. So, anyway, um, yeah, and I think that could go in three X, right? Sure. Yeah, no, I need to get them on YouTube. We're just hitting a very busy time of my life, so it's it's all crunch time all over the place. So that's all. I will get the, the things uploaded as much as I can, as soon as I can. Um, Pre-processing localization files. Oh, 
<laughs> this keeps coming up in various shapes. Uh, and they're not wrong. Right now it's awkward to 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 do what they want. Well, this is opening a new feature request. Well, that's not helpful, but okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, although this is the old number, so who knows how we'll find all these. Um, yeah, okay. I don't, I don't, yeah, okay. If someone wanted to do this, it would be a fine feature, I guess. I don't like the preprocess being used significantly, but it, it I appreciate can, it could be useful. Yeah, I don't know how to, yeah. Uh, now, the interesting thing... It's kind of weird m mixing your loc with your... which, of course, is bind time with your preprocessor, which, of course, is compile time. And you know, Yeah, ugh. Okay. It, it, it's it's an abuse. Now, this led me to find out that you can't actually have loc strings using loc strings. You can do that, yes. And, uh, you know, this might be the, you know... Um, I don't know, 80% case or whatever. Um, well, then actually, you know, this is solved. Maybe, maybe that's maybe this was filed back in the days before loc and inside loc worked. Uh, that, that certainly wasn't supported originally. So let's say this is solved with loc inside loc because all they're talking about is variables inside variables. So let's do yeah. that. They're not talking about if def here. So if we have another one about if def, then we would keep that one because you can't do if def today. That's true. So yeah, I, I'd say, okay. let's say this is solved with loc inside loc, and then we can keep the other ones that talk about the other features of preprocessing that aren't just variable replacements. All right. Directory MS build leaks handles in DevInf. Cool. Wix in official studio, heat directory. It completes, but then DevInf still has handles opens that heat ran over. I can't do builds because it can't be overwritten. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, you work around and run tools out of proc. Um, oh, and it's a heat directory task. Um, yeah, so, oh, heat, oh, I bet heat doesn't, yeah, see, heat doesn't create a separate app domain, so it can't load the things that when you run heat directory, yeah, this, yeah, sure. Um, I believe this is a problem. So yeah, this could get fixed in the future. Is this a three X kind of thing? Could be done in three X. Okay. It's just another one of those. It's another one of those things that don't work in harvesting. Disappointing, but true. I have a build setup action copy output preserve newest when I build these. These are not copied to the output directory. Is this still true? That doesn't sound right, but I bet this works in four because we use the common targets now. Oh, interesting. But this is also old, so it's hard to know. Um, that's, that's put it in 3x and go hunt it? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. obviously it's going to require some hunting. I mean, I See think it goes works. In 3X. It yeah, might it already goes. work. Yeah, it might work. Changed marker still shows when project properties are saved. Um, yes, this is this says it. Oh, had to be undo. I think these are in reverse order. I, th I think SourceForge yeah. gave them in reverse order. Oh well. Anyway, um, yes. Undo. Yeah, yeah. This is that MPF problems. I think. I, I bet this still exists. Okay. Could totally live in 3x. Three five. All right. All right. Where am I? Two nine seven two. Two nine seven one. Add, comment out and uncomment actions in XML config. Oh, seriously? Really? Wow. Um, I could see. Uh, I could, it's interesting. I can almost see uncomment, as in you know we'll leave this stuff in here. Um, 
it by default, and then we'll uncomment it during install when we have all the data? Yeah, you probably only need one of these plus rollback, but... Uh, well, then I was thinking, well, but if we do that, then, yeah, we have to recomment it for rollback, so we already have the comment out functionality there. Wow. I never thought about doing this. Uh, yeah. We could do it. could be done in 3x, I think. It's additive. Okay. <laughs> Temp file locked after using install packages update files. This is DTF type. It is. Um, this is probably true. Or not. Having the same MSI and working directory. Yeah, sure. Fine. Sounds like a straightforward fix to something. I'm sure we don't have it. It may even provide most of the information to fix it. Ah, oh, another thing in IS to configure. We could totally do that in 3x. Ooh, .NET 4.0 COM plus fails on installing assembly. Ooh. Oh, we should compile it 3.5. Well, yeah. Wait. To use, oh. Is there a way to get COM plus to do both? We'd have to provide a config file for, yeah, the Windows installer. I'm, I'm confused. It's basically they're trying to install a 4.0, um, uh, sorry, they're trying to install an assembly that was compiled against 3.5 in 4.0 that would work as long as you try, when you're trying to install it, you would mark it as allow to run on 4.0. Right. The problem is to set that, you have to set the config file for the exe process, which of course is MSI, I think in this case. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, not easy, but sure, I could see a nice solution for this being developed by someone that cares deeply about COM+, which is not currently me, but um, yeah, I could see that. I have no idea how hard it's going to be to get this to work right, but yeah. Yeah. No idea. <laughs> but it's a it's a bug. It's a good bug. IS extension should support application pool identity. Really? I thought we already had this. Oh, there's a pull request for this. This may be already in. Please resolve to a real pull request. Yay! It's in three eight. Cool. Resolve that fixed. April. Awesome. This bug is done. Harvest components registry value for code base incorrect. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yep. I'm sure that this is true. So this could be put in 3x. Um, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm not sure how it's going to find out which one is the right README one, but it's apparently picking the wrong README ID when hooking up the code base value, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, okay. The way he hooks all those things up is pretty crazy. Heat should be able to ge I generate direct your IDs with hierarchy. Yes, it totally could do that. It's a feature request. Heat could do this in 3x if someone wanted to do it. Of course, you're going to run out of room pretty fast if you keep going like that. But anyway. Yeah. Uninstall does not automatically refresh the start menu. Oh, this is the. Oh wait, didn't we? Didn't we? Oh no, maybe this is a different bug. But it's the same sort of thing. Ah, uh, yeah, it does not send a WM settings change. Didn't we have another bug tracking doing this for something? Yeah, this was for desktop shortcut, I think. Well, I think this is the same thing. Looks like the start menu also gets hit. Maybe put the two bugs together. 
Yeah, I'll find the other one and dupe it against. Cool. Sweet. Support automatically escaping backslashes in resolve file. Whoa. Support automatically escaping backslashes in resolve paths for XML config. Oh. Oh. Resolve the variable and then backslash? How would we do that? We would have to recognize the file path first. Um, I'm not even sure this is possible. Well, it's, po it's always, it's probably possible. Um... I'm completely not seeing the use case, but... Well, if you have a file ID and an XPath, the backslashes are going to be interpreted as XPath commands, and, you know, navigation commands in XPath, which means your file path is totally screwing up. Even... Uh... Okay. They must be using a file ID in an XPath. Oh, they're like, find, find the element that has the value that is, you know, this file path or something, and somehow you get your XS, X path to then not treat it as a string? Because essentially you'd want it as a string. I'm not sure how you'd get into the situation. I'm, I'm trying to picture, I mean... Because you're right, uh, you should have quotes around it in the end, and that should treat it as a string, which would then mean you were not navigating it. How do you get yeah. it to a place where you navigate it? Let's let's close this and say if anybody comes up with a more explicit use case that would be great. Works. Yeah, more info needed. I agree. The problem is that this is such an ancient bug, I don't think we're going to get them to come back to us anytime soon. So part of it is we need to go make the bug disappear and then see if someone hits it again. Close it off with more info needed. I agree with Jacob. All right. Heat and linked content files. This might be fixed, right? Isn't this the whole thing we did? Oh, linked content in the wrong location. Oh. Oh. Yeah, sure. Would not surprise me if this is a bug. It's heat doing the wrong things. Works for me. It, and it's it's heat inside Visual Studio, which of course is where it really goes bad. Ah. All right, determine special paths during compilation time. What? Made, determine .NET installation path during compilation time, like that to determine installation path to make use of certain tool. Uh, no, not enough. What? They could, yeah, they want us to find the uh, .NET framework path inside the Wix tool set. Um. .NET installation pass during compilation time. And MS Build will do that, and you can pass as a property to Wix. Wix isn't going to go searching for things like this. You agree? I'm still stuck on the why they want that kind of information inside their at, at compile time. Yeah. The install path of .NET on your machine, well, it's probably going to be identical to every other machine, but Actually, no, it probably won't be. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It would be useful to have some function in the Wix UI to make use of layouts. To let the location controls be computed at compile time so that one can do certain pages by specifying some property names and control types and not having to waste it. Right, so this is, yeah, this is like do what theme XML does. Um... Property names and control types. Yeah. Right, cause you, you could say make this control negative five and it would offset it five from the you know the, the right of the dialog box or whatever. It's basically what theme util does to make it easier to write those. I could see this being handy if someone wanted to do it. Because it's useful okay. in theme util. 
right? Right. Cause it's nice to be able to say set the width of this control to you know negative five, which basically means make it as wide minus five as the parent control, which should be possible. Ha! I use burn. I'm I'm not against that either, but <laughs> but anyway, like I said, if someone want to do it, I'm fine with that. I don't think I'm going to spend time doing that myself. Yeah, so Jacob and I are not signing up to do this feature, but this is a completely reasonable feature. And it's not, I mean, it would be useful. I could see it being useful if you're still stuck dealing with that. Yeah. Click once custom action library. What? To deploy click once stuff on a server, right? And then you want to do that. Um, fine. This is too. This is this is on. Uh, not really on mage. I, I say we toss this in niche. It's it, this is a little bit too open, open ended. I'm not even sure exactly what we do here. There's all these, yeah. There's all these settings you can change on a quick one. Uh, quick, I don't care. I don't care about quick ones that much either. That's, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not not the future. Well, yeah. Quick ones. Quick ones is probably deader than that than MSI. So. Yeah. So no. Uh, what do we, we? Let's just put this in niche. Yep. I mean, if someone really wanted to do all the work and figure out what it all meant. I'm I'm fine with that, but we're not going to keep that. Really be done. Heat resolve references in Wix directory instead of current directory. Sure. Heat's doing everything based off of where it's running from. Yep, using a separate app domain is a good idea. Yep, we should totally do this, and we could do that in 3x. All kinds of stuff that could be done in 3a. Please add ability to. Use one assembly for manage embed and for manage custom actions. One config file, one assembly, one stream. Can specify the same binary tech. This is DTF. It's DTF, and why would you need? I don't, I don't get this. Why would you? Why? Want, why would you want your embedded UI and your custom actions to share the same assembly? Because they share a lot in common, but that doesn't change anything beyond they share a lot. In, I mean, this is, you want to toss us a niche? Is DTF niche? I mean. I just, I don't, I'm missing something perhaps, but I don't see what, what this is other than a, you know, I tried to do it this way and it didn't work and so make it work. I'm not sure why you would care. They want one single assembly to put all this in. It would be a little smaller, probably. I mean, not significantly, but some. It's going to get extracted out. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Jacob's got it. It's, you know, if it's shared, put it in a shared assembly. DTF fully supports that. So we don't care. I don't care. I don't, I don't care about anybody I don't, else. I don't. Yeah. All right, let's just say no, and we'll move on. That works. All right, one more. Last one. Cannot use a CA type 18 with XE file in a merge module. Uh, now, this is IDs, right? With this, I get the following here. Unresolved app product. The app XE... Launch on exit file component. I'm um, lost. Where's the merge module? With XE in a merge module. But they're trying to schedule it from a product. Right. And you can't do that today because you can't resolve references across the module. Right. So you can't use file key there. This is technically true, but I just don't care. 
it's also been this way for a very long time. I just don't care. Because the, the alternative is to not create a reference there, but that's a very important reference to create for the normal case when you don't put your stuff inside a merge module. That's all you want to reference in a merge module. And don't use a merge module. Use a Wixlib and you don't have this problem. Um, there's so many other ways. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob and I are on the same page. I don't even know how you'd fix this. Such bad. You can't resolve that key to the XE. Yeah. I do. I mean, has this this has never worked? I mean, this is like going back to Wix two. True. I. Yep. This is a weakness. Oh well. Fair enough. All right. I'm fine. I mean, uh, well, truthfully. Who, who's going to fix it? I mean, you would I, well, I'm, I'm actually just sitting here trying to think of how you would fix it and not give up all these other things. And you'd have to do an additive thing. And right, it's exactly. It's just not. You'd have to add something that says, here, I'm giving you an ID. It'll, it'll be there, trust me. Right. I was, uh, uh, I mean, I guess I wouldn't say won't fix, you know, if, but... Clearly, this is. Uh, I'll put it in niche, and we'll put it out there and say if someone wants to tackle it, they can. But this is really not. I mean, that's what that is, right? It's like, uh, yes, you're right. It's not the correct thing. The fix is not good either. Merge module. Investment area. Yeah. So, we'll we'll do meh and kick it back. All right. I'm pretty sure we didn't get to 50, nor 60 yeah. for that matter. All right. I know. Where are we? Where are smart automatically? Where is this heat type 18? 2865. 2865. Where are we at? 430. Does anyone remember what we started with? 460? 466. And I have a few that I haven't finished closing. So actually, we might. Oh, we might have gotten close to 40. 40. Yeah. This is which, this one. Which two, was my three, original estimate. Four, five. Five more, right? That's forty-one. That's forty-one. <laughs> We're one off the magic port. Should we do one more? Okay. All right, we'll do one more. And we'll make Jacob happy. Um, as reported on this, duplicate red this, which could pause fine, but it gives you that. Yes. Yes. This is. This is. Their solution is wrong, but there's actually another bug for this. Um, from the very beginning, um, there's a bug uh, called prog ID ref, which is actually what this needs. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay. Yes. Although I don't know why they've duplicated their prog ID. Wait. How is it different? One of those prog IDs has to be different. Oh, yeah, there it is, util. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Wait, and oh, what? and this and it's the value in this case that are duplicate. This is different than the other bug. Um, oh, the, the value of, the, the path is the same. That can't be right. This is what we got for taking just one more bug. Yeah. We're stopping at 41. I don't know. We'll, we'll there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <I need laughs> I'm more. done. I have to go back to work. Um, so, yeah, cool. 41 bugs in a day. That feels better than whatever we got last time, 30. Um, <laughs> and we've set ourselves up for a hard bug to start with last time, but at least we'll be yeah, right. the things. Um, so, good stuff. 430. Hey, you know, we're going to be under 300 or into 300 soon with this rate. Yep. That's actually really exciting. Like, that's really, really exciting. Like, you know, by the end of the year, we could be in a really nice space, assuming holidays don't eat everything up. Of course, I'm going to lose yeah. next week and stuff like that. And, uh, and the holidays will eat up a lot. Right? Yeah, right, because 
of course, they all fall on Thursday. So, anyway. Um, good. Good job. We're making progress through this stuff. It's good to see it. And, you know, we're making decisions. And 3.8 um, is looking still pretty good. Um, oh, we haven't heard about the icons yet, have we? No. Bummer. Um, I'm hoping I get to that patch bundle thing next week. So, yes, there'll be that. Okay. Uh, 451 support. And, yeah, so those other two bugs will have fixes very quickly, I expect. Right, Bob? Uh, yeah, so on 451 support, it's going to come in two phases. Oh, okay. Um, the, the first phase is going to be to support the, the actual package groups. Um, the second phase, maybe, will support uh, 451 as your uh, prereq. Oh, the prereq BI thing. Yep. Yes, right. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Coolness. Well, then, there we go. Another great meeting for everybody. Um, thank you for showing up. Thank you for the discussion. And I guess we'll probably have to go back to Wix devs on that bug we opened or we started with because I don't have a good answer for that yet, especially Windows XP. Blah. So, anyway, yeah. have a good rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're going. Um, those of you going to sleep, have a good sleep. And we'll see you on the other side next time. Cheers. Bye.